In this video, I'm going to show you the highest paying quality dividend stocks in Australia. We'll be using one of the best stock research tools available in the market from a company called Stockopedia. They have a powerful stock screener that I'll be using today that filters through literally thousands of stocks, only giving us the companies paying the highest quality dividends. If you're new to dividends, they're really easy to understand. When we buy a share or stock in a company, we are essentially buying a little piece of it. This makes us a part owner. By becoming a part owner, commonly the company will share its profits with its owners. As shareholders, that means they share their profits with us. This is called a dividend, and we can compare dividends in two ways. First, you have the dividend per share, which is expressed in monetary terms. For example, here we can see Apple's history of paying dividends. Every quarter, they've reliably paid between 23 and 25 cents. This equates to about a dollar every year. And second, we have the dividend yield. This expresses the dividend in relation to the price of the company's stock. Apple, for example, is currently trading for $181.71. If we divide a dollar by $181.71, we get a dividend yield for Apple of about 0.55%. The dividend yield is a better metric for comparing how good the dividend is for a given company's stock. This is because different stocks can trade at different prices, and just looking at the dollar amount they pay as a dividend ignores the amount you had to spend in the first place to buy the stock. Here is Kiwi Property Group as an example. Their stock currently trades at about 81 New Zealand cents. Apple, as we saw before, trades at $181.74 in US dollars. Kiwi Property Group paid a dividend of just under 3 cents last year, while Apple paid almost a dollar. Comparing the dividend amount alone, Apple is a clear winner. However, to essentially buy the dollar of dividends, Apple investors had to spend over $180 or Kiwi Property Group investors spend just 81 cents to earn three. So when we look at the dividend yield, for every dollar invested, we get a much better return on our investment from Kiwi Property Group, as you can see here. In this video, we'll be taking the same approach by comparing dividend yields in Australia. In Stockopedia, I simply go to the Screens tab on the left-hand side of the screen. We now get a list of all 1,800 stocks in Australia and New Zealand. Screening stocks basically allows us to apply a bunch of filters, which narrows the list down to just a few names that meet our criteria. First things first, let's narrow the list down to only Australian stocks. We add a rule, limiting the country to just Australia. And as you see here, we have just 1,700 stocks remaining. The second filter we want to apply is the market capitalization. This is the value of the company in AUD. We'll narrow the 1,700 stocks to just those above 100 million Australian dollars. This gets rid of smaller companies that have lower trading liquidity and are relatively less mature businesses. We are now left with 600 companies. The third filter we want to use is of course the yield. We don't want to include any companies paying less than a 5% yield. Otherwise, if we are income investors, we may as well keep our money in the bank and avoid the risk of the investment value going down as we have with stocks. Now, we are down to 146 companies. The fourth filter that I like to use is the one-year price movement. There is a hazard to watch out for when dividend investing, called a dividend trap. Dividend yield is calculated by dividing the past year's dividend with the current stock price. If there is a 50% drop in the share price, for example, the dividend yield has essentially doubled. This is a trap for less experienced investors that are lured into a stock just by looking at the dividend yield. Here I'll filter for an annual price change of minus 5% or greater. Now we are down to just 89 results. The fifth filter that I use is the price CAGR over five years where I want to filter for companies above zero. This removes any companies that are slowly decaying in their stock price. A good example is Magellan Financial. And as you can see, despite having a really good dividend yield, their stock price has been decaying over about five years. This gets us down to just 53 companies. Already, this is a pretty good list to start looking at. However, if we wanted to take a more rigorous approach, we can use the Piotrowski F-score. Piotrowski, a professor from Stanford, developed this nine criteria scoring system to signal the financial strength of a company. Dividend investing is more than just filtering for high yield stocks. To pay dividends over a long period of time, a company requires strong financials and a dependable source of revenue. If we want a high degree of comfort, we can use a measure of seven or greater here. This drops our list to just 20 companies. Taking a seventh step, just to be sure, we can use the Altman Z score. Like Piotrowski, Altman is another financial academic 
this time from New York University. His Z-score is a financial formula that assesses the probability of company bankruptcy within two years. Here is just a few examples where the Z-score was effective as a warning sign for companies on the brink of bankruptcy. As dividend investors, companies with a low Z-score should be avoided. Here you can see two approaches for applying the Z-score one for manufacturers and one for non-manufacturers. In our screen, I'll apply them both, each time filtering for a value above 1.8, just to be safe. We are now down to just 12 companies, which is a good number to assess. Stockopedia also gives a ranking to stocks between 0 and 100, based on quality, value, and momentum factors. The 12 stocks that we have filtered for have offered a very high quality set of businesses to work from. Let's now dive into each of the 12 companies. First up we have Horizon Oil, ticker HZN, with a dividend yield of about 17%. They operate in the energy sector, specifically the oil and gas space, operating both in New Zealand and China. Currently, the stock offers a yield of about 17%. In recent years, they have grown their revenue, their profitability, and their cash position, which vastly exceeds its debt. Based on many financial metrics, Horizon Oil stands out among Australia's oil and gas producers. Second up is Fortescue, ticket FMG, with a dividend yield of just under 10%. Fortescue is a favourite among Australian dividend ETFs, as it is one of the larger cap stocks on the list. They operate in the metals and energy sector. On the metal side, Fortescue extracts mainly iron, while on the energy side, they are involved in developing green energy, hydrogen and ammonia. Their financial performance has flatlined in recent years, having peaked in 2021 in terms of revenue and profitability. It remains a favourite dividend stock for the Australian market, and with a yield this high, it's no surprise. Third up is Shaver Shop ticker SSG with a yield of 8 plus percent. They operate in the consumer cyclical sector, selling personal care and grooming products both online and through 122 stores in Australia and New Zealand. They have been a strong performer with solid revenue and profitability growth even after the uplift from COVID around 2020 and 2021. As a stable retail business, Shaver Shop comes out on top for retail. Fourth is Rice Growers, ticket SGLLV, with a yield of 8%, operating in the consumer defensive sector. As one of the largest sellers of rice in Australia and New Zealand through their Sunrise brand, they are a very stable stock as a pantry staple. Since 2021, rice growers have seen rapid growth in their revenue and profitability. With earnings almost double the dividends on a per share basis, its dividend cover of 1.8 times is among the highest in this list proving its stability as a dividend stock. Fifth is Sugar Terminals, ticker SUG, with a yield of 7.4% in the industrial sector. This is my favorite stock so far. Its business is super simple. Sugar Terminals provide handling and storage of bulk sugar and other commodities at six sites around Australia. This company is rare in just how stable its performance is. As I look through all of these charts for revenue, profitability, and dividends, they all look the same with steady growth. With about a year's worth of profit stored as cash, negligible debt, and almost a full pass-through of earnings to shareholders, this is a near-perfect example of a dividend stock. Even better is the fact the stock price is extremely stable, even looking out over 5 or 10 years making this a great alternative to fixed income investments. It's such a simple business model and a truly profitable and reliable one. Dividend investors are honestly sleeping on the stock. The only catch is that it's listed on the National Stock Exchange of Australia, making it much harder to purchase shares. First, it isn't going to be available on popular broking websites like Sharesies, and secondly, there's little to no liquidity on this exchange. Here you can see there is nobody selling the stock at the moment, and the processed orders are infrequent. Sixth is Wham Microcap, ticker WMI, with a yield of 7.3% in the financial sector. Simply put, Wham is an investment holding company that invests in undervalued microcap stocks on the ASX, below $300 million market cap. Here is a list of their holdings, including many steady companies, such as Singaporean Telco to us, early childhood provider Embark, and FPOS provider SmartPay. Wham's objective is to return investors a steady stream of fully franked dividends and to provide medium to long-term capital growth. Its stock price hasn't been the most stable in recent years, 
but they have managed to increase their dividends year over year and grow the fund size. In seventh, we have another industrials player, Shape Australia, paying an annual dividend yield of 7%. They operate in the construction space, specifically fit out services to offices and commercial buildings, such as hotels and healthcare operators. Their top line has grown in recent years after COVID, especially in 2023. Profitability is taking a bit longer to pick up, but it's predicted to continue to improve. The company has a strong cash balance around the $50 million mark, giving it a strong financial base with relatively low long-term debt on the books. Dividends have only been paid out for the past couple years, but hopefully they continue to do so as their profitability improves in the coming years. In eighth, we have Joyce, ticket JYC, paying a yield of 6.95% in the consumer cyclical sector. Joyce is predominantly a kitchen and wardrobe retailer, operating 26 showrooms for Kitchen Connection and Woolspan across Queensland, New South Wales and South Australia. They also retail bedding and furnishings through the Bedshed brand and home staging in Perth. Their stock has had a healthy few years, with the stock price doubling over the past five years. Revenue has also risen over this time, while profitability has held strong over the past couple years. Joyce's dividends have been increasing in recent years, now hitting 25 cents per share. So this is not only a great little dividend stock, but on the capital gain side, it has been a strong performer too. In ninth, we have Lycopodium, an industrial company paying an annual dividend yield of 6.7%. To save you from the jargon, it operates in the complex engineering space, solving large construction problems. Obviously, they hire some of the smartest engineering brains in Australia, and their past projects show that. Their revenue and profitability has grown exponentially in recent years, and their stock price has followed suit, by tripling over the past three years. With strong capital gains and a strong dividend yield, this is a solid stock for any dividend investor. In 10th, we have Ampol, paying a dividend yield of 6% in the energy sector. Ampol trades under the ticker ALD. It goes without saying that Ampol is one of the largest sellers of petrol in Australia and New Zealand. They also refine their own fuel and operate the convenience shop element of their locations as well. Over the past couple years, their revenue has remained steady while their profitability is slightly down in 2023. Their stock price has held well and is currently down about $5 off their recent all-time high in April. Just a good, steady dividend-paying stock, as long as they pivot to accommodate the electric vehicle drivers of the very near future. In 11th is Dexus Industria, paying a dividend yield of 5.5%. Dexus is an Australia-based real estate investment trust managing a property portfolio worth over $1 billion. These include warehouses, offices, and a range of other commercial property assets. Recent years have been tough for the real estate industry due to increasing interest rates. Dexus saw the effects of this in 2023 with a sharp decline in their profitability which saw their stock price decline too. Despite this, they saw a slight increase in their revenue. Their free cash flow remains steady, which has allowed them to continue paying investors a fair dividend through these challenging times. They've also taken efforts to retire roughly 20% of their debt in 2023, which may in turn have seen a decrease in their interest costs. And finally, in 12th place is Balador Technology Investments, another financials company offering a dividend of 5.4%. Like Wham, Balador is an investment holding company seeking investment opportunities in the IT and media sectors. Bailador invests in high growth companies with proven business models and established revenues, seeking a 5 to $20 million minority stake in each. As an investment holding company, their financial performance is all over the place. In a press release last year, they announced ongoing fully frank dividends of 4% of pre-tax net tangible assets each year. They also offer a dividend reinvestment plan offering a 2.5% discount to their post-ex-dividend date price. So should they continue this, they could be a good addition to a dividend portfolio. So that rounds out the 12 highest paying quality dividend stocks in Australia. A whopping 92% of my audience don't subscribe to the channel. Hitting the subscribe button down below really helps the channel and encourages me to make more content just like this. Thanks for watching and I look forward to catching you on the next one. Cheers.